Hi, folks. Uh, so uh, we have a existing, I mean, very exciting uh, uh, days ahead with the ballerina. And but uh, what we try to like uh, cover in depth uh, information related to the WSO2 platform, especially uh, the integration. So, uh, so the, the the topic is that implementing an effective digital platform using WSO2. So. Let me go through the overview because uh, we have run out a little bit of time, so I will try to catch uh, some, of the, some of these things which we have already spoken about. So uh, I will go to the introduction and, uh, introduction and the need of integration platform, and then uh, the enterprise integrator 6.0, you may already aware what we are doing that one, the, 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 the radical change that we try to bring uh, because of this digital transformation. And then uh, the architectural styles of integration and the hybrid integration, I will go in depth of like integration cloud and give some sort of a, uh, explanation on that one. And then we'll talk about the debug uh, and troubleshooting integrations because uh, since I am from support and also, and also a kind of member who work with the ESB and uh, I know like uh, you people like uh, reported like different type of issues when it comes to like integration, like uh, the how it's performing, how can you, how you gonna debug and so on. So this is gonna be interesting part. And then we're gonna go on like a deployment, uh, performance, performance tuning and uh, product hardening. Like these are the things that you need to know when it's come to the integration. So uh, let me try to go with uh, the, the conventional way of inter uh, introducing why we need integration. Like uh, during Kasun talk, that he has mentioned about why we need integration. So the integration is required because uh, today's world that we're supposed to, uh, come, sorry, uh, we're supposed to like uh, uh, integrate with multiple uh, systems. Some of them are proprietary systems, some of them are very legacy systems, and we don't know their protocols and so on. So what actually happens is like uh, those are disparate, plat disparate platforms that we need to integrate and there's no single vendor. So uh, at the end of the day, like, uh, it's become very critical how you're going to integrate your solution. So I would like to take uh, 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 the definition of enterprise integration, like uh, this is the same thing that uh, which Kasun has mentioned, like uh, the definition of enterprise integration is plumbing different software application services systems and forming new uh, solution is known as integration. So I mean, uh, so if you look at the, the the definition that I extracted from the Forrester definition, so it explains what, why we need integration and what are the uh, mandatory requirements. So uh, with that one, I will try to go with a digital banking experience, right? So this is one of the, because I try to take this sample because uh, if you look at the different, different like, uh, uh, like um, uh, I mean, different, different uh, organizations, like for instance, healthcare and aviation and the banking. So these are the basic three type of digital transformation, digital transformation entities that are revolved al along the timeline, right? So if you think of the banking sector that span towards decade, right? So if you think of like how they have adapted themselves and how they have adapted according to digitalization, so you could understand. I mean, if you look at the, if you get the phone, like if you take your mobile phone, it has become a like relatively like a virtual assistant for you, right? I mean, nobody goes into the bank these days and everything in, on your like mobile pocket, right? So you could do everything what you wish. So uh, this is sample I try to take because uh, when it's come to the banking, right? So you have typical like uh, integration points that you are talking about. For instance, that uh, we have, you have to communicate with ATM devices, uh, ATMs and then the branches and so many other like consumer related entities. And then when it's come to the, 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 the integration sector, like you have to communicate with like mainframe systems, you have to communicate with investment systems. Those are like a proprietary system maybe. Those are maybe like, like legacy systems. Like, but the problem is like when we try to integrate, we can't really think of whether we should, do, whether we should use a pure microservices based integration. So that means is, the means is we have to have a blend of microservices integration and the typical ESB level integration. So uh, that's what uh, this diagram is all about. Like, uh, so what we try to focus here on like, how are we going like, to improve the digital experience through this use case, right? Uh, I will go to the next slide, right? What happens is, when it comes to uh, the integration, right? So you, you mentioned, like, if I go back, and if you try to integrate the system, like, if a company, like, expand from 10 years, uh, right? So when it's, if they don't have a proper integration, like, terminology or strategy, what has happened at the end of the day, you would experience this kind of, like, a, uh, 
miss environment, miss environment, I would say, right? So this diagram, like, uh, basically what has happened, like, you have to communicate with different protocols, legacy system, reliable, I mean, reliable delivery, so orchestration, so everything become like mesh at the end of the day. So uh, with that one, that's why we need a platform, a platform where you can singularly, singularly communicate with multiple systems and you can communicate and you can uh, like uh, this, uh, uh, co connect your environment properly. So let's, with that one, I would like to go with uh, the integration requirements. Again, this slide, this is one that Kasun has went like in detail, right? So what are the integration requirements? So the integration requirements are like growth and diversity of integration needs. Like if you take uh, the today's business world that you have IoT, APIs, uh, software services, B2B integrations and so on. So these are one of the kind of integration requirements you need to have. Then agility and ease of integration. So how you could easily integrate your environments. Then the orchestration and how we can quickly uh, implement the complete orchestration across, the, uh, across your environment. And then uh, when it comes to the integration, integrating applications, services, and data API identity. So this is becoming one of the critical factor when it comes to the integration. And another thing is the performance. So if you take a ballerina, if you take enterprise service bus that we have, used to have, and everything is depending on the performance. It is the, it is like, a, it is like, it, it's basically the deal that we are uh, trying to achieve with all these integrations. So it, it, it becomes more and more critical. The TPS, the deal on de uh, deal, uh, I mean demand pattern. How you want to like expand? How you want? How you want? To, how you? How, how do you want to like? Uh, uh, expand your integration horizontally, vertically, so that becomes uh, the, under the performance. And then the scalability, right? So uh, we're talking about like a container bridges, base, base approach, and so on and so forth. So these are all uh, basically like uh, what are uh, along with the integration requirements. So I believe like Kasun has went, went, to, went through some of these uh, requirements. <laughs> so uh, let me try to uh, get our typical way of introducing uh, the enterprise integration platform. So basically what we had was like, uh, generally you could, enterprise service bus is act as a middleware layer, a kind of a, like a bus where you are communicating with all the you know, legacy systems, different cloud-based cloud services, and web, web services, red full services, and so on and so forth. And then for, a, for, for databases, like if you want to like retrieve something from the database, what you should do is you, would, you have used like data service server. I believe some of you may aware what is data service server because, uh, and also the message broker. The message broker is something that if you want to achieve pub sub, right? So pub sub uh, patterns, if you want to implement pub sub, sub, pub sub scenarios. So generally the message broker is the one which actually act. And then some of the questions came from your audience regarding the business process server. Why we, use, why we need to use that one, the business process server used because it is act as like a stateful orchestration engine because enterprise service bus basically the stateless. So whatever the information will keep keep in a shorter period. But what we have done was like uh, we have done some sort sort of a radical change, and with the digital transformation, we have uh, tried to replace everything with uh, the single server. So that's what we try to do uh, from now on, and. Basically, like you may already aware, what is the enterprise integrator? So, the enterprise integrator is consists of service integration, right? It's known as enterprise service bus, and then service and hosting capabilities. Like, if you want to host micro uh, microservices, so you can use these hosting capabilities. I think Dr. Sanjeev already mentioned in today' discussion, like why we need to use and what are the changes that we have done in terms of service and hosting capabilities. And then, when it comes to the messaging, right? We can use uh, uh, WSO2 message broker, that is the replay, I mean, message broker runtime that we are talking about. And then the data integration, the business process, and generally, like, you can, th you can think of, like, these two items. Basically, this is, like, uh, something we have to include in uh, integration architecture because analytics and tooling is something that we need because when we develop some, so, some sort of integration, right, we have to have a way of, like, visualize what we try to, uh, what, what we have integrated. For instance, like you can, say, you can say like the statistics. And those are the ones that we have to have through the analytics. And then the tooling, like tooling is some part that we have to have because we used to implement the scenarios like 
uh, using uh, available tools like in Ballerina we have Ballerina Composer, and what we had with uh, the, the typical integration is WSO2 Developer Studio. So I think we are now trying to like compete each other which one is going to be the best, right? So I believe like Ballerina will be take over. Uh, and this one uh, will be something that uh, we gradually try to maintain through the uh, products identity uh, integration uh, 6.0 like family, right? Right, so uh, uh, what I try to uh, do with this in, uh, diagram is like, I will take the, the banking use case, right? So if, the, if, you, if I take the banking use case, like how, you, how, how I can like integrate these systems together. So what you can do is like, you can typically use, uh, this diagram explains like typical WSO2 integration terminology, like, right? so you can see that if you want to communicate with the APIs from the consumer point of view, you have to use the API manager because that would, that is a, that is a product that actually like uh, act as a like, uh, you know, con act as a like control and uh, handling the security and so and so forth. And then you could use your microservice, so if you, say, if you say like, if you go back to the diagram that they have, there are maybe several, several banking components, that those banking com components can be uh, like, maybe implemented through the microservice and you can host uh, uh, in, your, in your environment. And then the business process, and then the, uh, the, if I come to the identity server, right? So identity server is something that uh, we used to have as a like a common component for everybody, every, everywhere, because for a federation, and uh, for use of security, so this is this component is component is must to be must to be there. So what we have done was like I integrated that uh, I come I uh, just uh, draw the dry, dry lines that so it would communicate with all the uh, uh, services. And then when it come to the integration layer, so this is the part that uh, we already talk about. Like uh, the integration layer has the capability of communicating with different different like proprietary systems. It can be any any of these systems like and then the message processor will take care of your like a, like a, like a state full orchestration. And then the analytic part and the messaging part, basically messaging is where that you can think of, okay, if I have use case like uh, uh, I want to have like a reliable delivery, right? Guaranteed delivery operations. How can I implement that part? So basically you can have a, a enterprise integrator message broker runtime uh, hosted in somewhere and you can utilize in that way. So this is a typical like uh, diagram that we try to redraw with the uh, introduction of enterprise integrator. Like if you go with the typical diagram, like typical way of like representing this one. So you can imagine that uh, this, uh, this can be like ESB, this can be a business process server, this can be a message broker and so on and so forth. So uh, this is uh, the way that we try to like uh, radically try to change the way of that you could think the way to improve your runtime. Right, so I will try to go uh, the integration server architecture a little bit because uh, we want to we need to identify like what actually it, ha it has. So uh, I'll start with the inter uh, service integration. So service integration, it it is known as it is known as enterprise service bus, right? So why we, what is this integration service does? So it is a lightweight, high performance service bus, right? And basically, it supports uh, support comprehensive support of for REST and SOAP and WS asterisk, and be, and also it support uh, some other uh, proprietary uh, like uh, integration such as such as SAP, FIX, and HL7. So this is domain specific solution. We have uh, like uh, adapters in built, and then we are always talking about, talking about why we have this uh, enterprise. Uh, service or in service integration runtime because we always think people do need to know about like what is Java, how to write a Java code and so and so forth, right? Basically it is like zero code and uh, configuration driven language that we had and then this extensibility and the scalability. So you can write, if you want to write some extensions, what you can do is you can run, write extension and plug uh, straight away to the enterprise service bar. And also we cover 100% of all enterprise integration patterns. So uh, these are the like uh, service integration pattern, uh, 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 enterprise integrator uh, uh, runtime. And if I go in depth of like the enterprise service runtime, the, the features that we have. So it's basically the enterprise service runtime is enterprise service bus 5.0.0, right? So uh, what it has is like uh, we have introduced, uh, revamped, we have introduced a new, uh, new protocol called, known as inbound transport, right? So it's a it's a, like a revamp technology because uh, uh, you don't we had problems of like uh, when you when you try to in, when you, when 
if you want to introduce like let's say transport like JMS, you have to like uh, reboot the enterprise service bus and bus and need to uh, plug whatever the components. But with the inbound transport, what you can do is like you can without like rebooting or anything, you could uh, like plug any messaging architectures you want. So I mean, if you go to the documentation, you can find out how you can implement uh, 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 in, inbound transport uh, uh, scenario. And then the coordination support. This is something that we had uh, problems in the, over the past few years with the 480 and 490, 48, I mean basically below 490 family, where that, uh, how you could like co uh, communicate, how you can coordinate tasks among the cluster. Because if one task in a cluster, like uh, there's a problem if there's a one server goes down, there's no way the, the, the node in the, in the cluster would take care of the task and start to run. So we have like uh, enhanced that capability like uh, with the coordination support. In addition to that, what we have done was like uh, we have introduced JMS 2.0 support, right? I believe, I believe you may already know that what is JMS 2.0 and then the WebSocket support, right? And then one of the critical stuff that we have done was like uh, data mapping and uh, mediation debugger. So you have observed in the morning, like uh, with the ballerina that we have implemented like comprehensive uh, debugger, right? So what we had was like, this is the like uh, basically starting point of everything. Like uh, we have done uh, uh, debugger uh, with the WSO2 integration server. So with the 6.0 family, you still will want to like, if you want to debug, your integration, you could use uh, the mediation debugger for any purpose, right? So uh, the service integration. So this is a, this is this is one of the like critical part of identify service. How you can integrate services? So basically, these are the if you take enterprise service bus 5.0 or enterprise integrator, right? 6.0. So basically, we have revamped the way of like uh, seeing how you can integrate the scenario. So earlier we had was like uh, we have the inflow and we have you supposed to have outflow. So with this uh, kind of a revamp, we have introduced a call mediator and the respond mediator. Where now you could call your backend service within the same flow, right? And you can respond back to the client. So these are the like uh, entries, like uh, I would say like uh, interfaces that are exposed to the client. Like you can use inbound transport where you could, it is like a def same definition as polling transport. And then the APIs and the HTTP. So, so this is basically for a, like RESTful integration. And this is a typical like SOA integration, like uh, how you could uh, uh, expose your contract to the client. So with this one, like uh, uh, this is basically like a service integration scenario that we have like revamped with the ESP 5.0 uh, and so and, and above. So, uh, I will go to the next one, the data integration. So data integration is the part that, uh, where we could like, if you want to expose your, whatever the data as a service to the outside world. So this is the product that uh, we have. So basically like, uh, uh, it will be like renamed and will be known as a data integration. So uh, you could uh, uh, read uh, CSC files, multiple databases, and requests, and, and, and basically you can, re and you can like get a, I mean you can like send a request and query through these uh, multiple data sources, and you can get the response back, right? So generally like uh, with this scenario that now you can implement a distributed transaction scenario, right? So that is one of the critical, one of the queries that we came through from different channels, like asking, okay, how we can implement distributed transaction? I have multiple databases, right? If I send a request, I want to call multiple databases at the end of the day, if there's something wrong, right? Somehow I need to roll back the transaction. So if you think, uh, if you want to implement that one in a typical way, right? You could see that uh, you'll have to write some sort of coding, but with this flow and with the, with, the, with, with the data service server and with the data service data service integration, so you can implement this one in, in quick time without any like bus, right? So uh, then I will go for a business process. Right? So the business process is known as a business process server runtime. So with this enterprise, uh, uh, enterprise integrator 6.0, we'll, we'll known this one as a business process, and it will be a business process server runtime. So this is where that if you want to have like a typical stateful uh, business process, if stateful scenarios to be integrated, for instance, like again, this can be taken as your banking solution, where you want to 
uh, send some sort of a credit rating, uh, you want to call some sort of a, uh, invoicing, right? So how you, how you gonna, how, let's say like if you want to get approval for a loan, right? So the loan is basically like you want to get approved to, from like human interaction, like someone has to approve. So these processes will take a longer period, right? So that's why we have to have the business process survey in place where the stateful orchestration has to be there. So this diagram would explain that, uh, show how you can implement stateful integration with using a business process server. Then I will go, go for a business process uh, server features. Basically what we have is, uh, it's a define and exe execute business processes for a BPL 2.0 uh, and BPN. And basically, as I, as I explained, so it, it is for a long running stateful processes, right? And what we have with the BPS is uh, workflows and where you can interact with humans, right? Human interactions and you could uh, process your flow. So we have like a BPN user tasks and web service, human tasks, and so on and so forth. So the, uh, those are the stuff available. So then if you go to the data, manu uh, another one is like data manipulation and extensibility, right? So basically like, uh, just like in enterprise service bus, if you want to have like data transformation, so typically uh, you could use this kind of like data manipulation and extens extensibility uh, uh, to transform your messages. And then the graphic graphical modeling. So this is one of the, main part of this uh, business process server where that you could have, uh, you can ha you have like comprehensive like graphic modeling where you can visualize how this uh, multiple back backend service is gonna interact and you could uh, visualize it. And then uh, uh, the, the custom key performance indicator. So these are like monitoring aspects. So these are the features available with the business process server. And then I will go for a message broker runtime. So we have done a major revamp over the last few years with the message broker, where this is the place where that you want to have, uh, let's say, uh, higher guaranteed delivery, pub sub mechanism, how you could do that. So for that one, what we have done was like, uh, we, have, uh, we have this message broker runtime, and what it basically does, it does like avoiding message routing over the network, basically, right? and then uh, use scalable storage to store message between nodes, and it's highly available, and it does the, fo uh, does the fault tolerance. Basically, like in, when it comes to message brokers, we always talk about like how quickly, how efficiently we can uh, uh, implement the message broker cluster to stand against the fault, right? So basically, this architecture with the message broker architecture you could enhance your experience, like uh, the way to implement uh, the high availability. And then the distribution and coordinate, and then uh, the extend, extend message support for IoT framework, like for MQTT transport. So we have the extensible support for a message broker. So if you have any question related to that one, so we could meet and we could discuss uh, related to the message broker, right? And then analytics. So I told you like uh, analytic play, analytics play a critical part of integration because uh, that would give you a flexibility of like, uh, uh, like to see what you have integrated. For instance, like uh, after this session, we'll be doing a hands-on session, right? And we'll be showing how the analytics are immensely helpful to understand and how, you, how, how that can be useful to debug your scenario and identify where it went wrong and get the service statistic. Because when it's come to production, it is actually required you, you to know like what are the endpoints that are get executed, right? And what, how many times and what, who are the users and what are the messages and how the message flows, right? What are the message flows? So this is the analytic framework basically uh, does that part. So uh, generally like uh, this is a typical diagram I extracted from, uh, uh, from a, 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 a data analytics server side. But when it's come to the uh, integration scenario, what we should uh, focus on, the mediation and statistics and the message tracing. So we'll be focusing on that part in terms of integration, right? So uh, analytic server, basically like uh, uh, this shows like uh, some of the samples like that uh, uh, screenshot of uh, what we have captured from an ESB analytics aspect, like how, you, how it shows different like statistics. Uh, this is for uh, like proxy service and so on, right? And then I will go for a tooling. Because just like a ballerina composer, WSO2 uh, Developer Studio allows you to deploy and maintain your enterprise scenario, right? So basically what, we, what happens is like uh, we have, you can pack your product artifacts. Your product artifacts can be like 
a simple uh, AR file, or can be proxy, or can be WAR file. So de what developers can do, developers can build and create a product artifact, right? And then they can deploy through the server. So each server runtimes know which one to get deployed, right? And the same theory, the same uh, terminology will be applicable for enterprise integrator. integrator, integrator. So uh, when it comes to tooling and service integration, uh, the, 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 the conventional way of like uh, see how your interaction, the integration has done, would be, would, will be like uh, uh, visualized like this. I mean, this is the like horizontal way of representing. So Dr. Sanjeeva mentioned about that. The problem that we have is right, OK, if you want to get for the information of this one. Basically, we'll have to take this scenario and we'll have to draw a sequence diagram to identify what are the integrations. So this is the section where we try to improve uh, with coming releases. And then this is one of the uh, uh, major improvements we have done over the ESD5 and so on, the data mapper. Because from various people, we got a requirement saying, I want to map, I want to map a different, different data formats in conical, conical data structures. And so we have uh, produced a data uh, mapper where now you can map multiple data sources and it would uh, uh, bring, bring what, what the requirements you need. So uh, then I will go for a connector story. So this is the, uh, uh, basically like a, uh, what tooling does. So if you, uh, if you are aware that we have uh, something called product uh, extensions, like for instance, like a, different connector stores, connectors, and what you can do is you can uh, get connectors and you can integrate into the flow. So basically, like, uh, the tooling enable you to do this uh, in connect integration, like, seamlessly. Right? So uh, then I will go for the hybrid integration. So hybrid integration is like, uh, uh, like, how you can come, how you, there are situations where that uh, you want to uh, integrate your on-premises business solution and some of the business process solution you need to move into the cloud, right? So the hybrid integration is the way that you, how you can determine. So what we have done like a, a recent, uh, 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 I mean, few days ago that we have released integration cloud, right? So what integration cloud does is now, you could create uh, the, your integration scenarios through the cloud. So if you, log, if you have account, if you log into the WSO2 integration cloud, right? And what you can do now, you can see there's a something called uh, a WSO2 ESD composite application, where now you, you will be able to create, you can create your integration flow from, let's say, using tools like Developer Studio, then you can upload them into the integration, upload them here while filling the form. And then at, at the end of the day, you would see, uh, you can create a scenario like this. So this is a scenario that we're gonna demonstrate uh, during the, uh, hands-on session where that uh, you can implement uh, your integration scenario like using car carbon applications, and then you have multiple uh, microservices, and then your web application. So now what you can do is you could completely move out your uh, on-premises business requirements to the cloud. So the, the, the advantage here is now you don't need to do any other, any other like operational tasks. For instance, that if you want to uh, if you want to scale your environment, like basically what you need to do is like uh, in on-premise scenario, you need to uh, create and spawn another server, and there's so many things that you need to worry about. But with integration cloud, what, what actually happens is that you could seamlessly integrate, you can seamlessly replicate your scenario without knowing, without any effort. So this is a real uh, good uh, like uh, uh, invention, like uh, it, 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 it's a kind of motivation that uh, uh, the reason you can find that, okay, why I should uh, move to the hybrid uh, integration. You could try it out this uh, scenario like, uh, and then uh, we'll be going into uh, the extension point. So basically like uh, if you go to uh, WSO2 connector store, uh, uh, we have revamped the connector store recently, like now not only enterprise service bus connectors, what we have is identity server connectors and analytics extensions. So with this one now, what you can do is, uh, you can uh, build your cloud integration scenarios. So there are like 150 odd connectors, and if you go to the ESP connector documentation, you will find different, different integration scenarios where how you can implement. So uh, I believe like some of you may have referred, some of you may have like already using it, right? So uh, uh, this is a, like an extension point under hybrid integration. 
right? So uh, then I will uh, uh, go for the debug and troubleshooting. So the debug and troubleshooting is one of the critical part when you try to implement your scenario, right? So this is one of the mm, uh, invention that we have done with the Enterprise Service Bus 5.00. So you can see that uh, you can uh, you can you can have your mediation flow and you can you can put a kind of a trouble breakpoint there and you can try to integrate you can try to test your integration flow whether it is working so this would immensely helpful to understand and see where the things go wrong for instance like earlier what we used to do is like if there's something go wrong we used to enable vlogs and try to compare in the development environment see where the things go wrong but this would bring like a very comprehensive this is kind of kind of comprehensive uh, experience for a developers uh, to mediate uh, your flow through the deep, uh, tooling. And then with the analytics, I mentioned that uh, why we are using analytics part. So with the analytics part now what you can do is uh, you can go through the flow and identify how many times the flow has been executed, uh, the information related to that one. And also you can go through the, each message. You can click the message and then you can view the flow, how this message has been tra uh, uh, traveled through the integration. So this would bring an immense advantage during the mediation flow, as well as if you try to troubleshoot whatever the situation under production as well. So it's a blend of, for me, it's a blend. So um, uh, that's how it's gonna helpful. Uh, so uh, with that one, since I'm running out of a little bit of time, I will go for uh, architectural styles of integration, right? So uh, generally, like, why we need integration, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, integration patterns, architectural styles of integration. So when we talk about architectural styles of integration, the enterprise integration pattern is the most fundamental and the basic that all we refer. So if you look at the WSO2 documents, we have separate documentation where we have listed down different type of architectural patterns. Like for instance, if you take a dead, uh, point to point channels, uh, publish subscriber patterns and so on. So basically we, uh, we extract the idea from the enterprise integration, integration, pa integration pattern book, uh, which is very, f it's a very famous book that you can read out and with that one, we have identified uh, common patterns and we have implemented and showcased them in our documentation. For instance, like, let's go for a, a one of the patterns that we all, all, all always seen. For instance, like, uh, if you have some sort of a message, back, uh, back, if you're, let's say, a, a critical message where that you want to deliver that message to the backend somehow, but you are not sure whether the backend is available or not. So what happens? In that situation, like what you can do is you can implement a dead letter channel pattern. So where when the message comes, you just store message first with the message store, and then you forward message to the backend whenever it is available. So this is uh, one of the dead uh, pattern that you could use in order to implement your integration scenario. And then other thing is the splitter pattern. So it is just like that in Ballerina. What we have right now is, uh, I mean, fork and join, right? Fork and join is like cloning in in, in terms of like. Uh, in, in, if you map with the the, uh, the enterprise integration, uh, enterprise uh, in, uh, enter, uh, WSO2 enterprise WSO2 ESB basically. So uh, the splitter basically what it does, it, it is same as like for each. So you get the message and you split the message and send to the multiple destinations and multiple destinations may reply the message and you could like aggregate them and respond back to the client. So this is one of the pattern that uh, uh, we could use. And then I will talk about uh, the microservices in modern enterprise architecture. So I guess uh, Kasun, ha Kasun, Kasun has already uh, explained about the role of enterprise integration. And in that talk, he already mentioned about how the microservices I revolution revolutionized the world. So basically, like uh, if you look at the, 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 the article which Kasun has published, so he, where he has mentioned about like where the integration server comes into the picture, right? So this is a point that we always need to communicate, so concentrate on. So you could have microservices, and microservices can be like orchestrate using gateway, but still, if you want to like uh, integrate with the legacy systems, right? So still, you want to have the integration server inbuilt. So this, this, this part will, will be the, uh, this part will have responsibility of integrating with multiple systems and then a response back to the client as necessary. And then uh, one of the things I want to mention about because this this uh, video, right? So if you go and listen to this video, it is about loose couple and its architectural benefits from Dr. Frank Lehman. 
He has presented this one uh, during uh, WSO2 con 2016. So this is worth of reading like a uh, few books. So I would uh, recommend you to go and read, uh, listen to this uh, video where he explained about some of the architectural styles that you can benefit, that you can take and benefit yourself while implementing integration scenario, right? Okay, so I'll go to the deployment. And so the deployment is like something uh, we always think of like, how you could easily we can deploy uh, your integration. So generally like now we have multiple software, different softwares where you could utilize. So the pattern that we try to uh, present to the client is like, okay, you have multiple environments. So how can I maintain my software in multiple environments? So one way is like you can have configuration model and you can keep them in a different repository. And some of the repository, you can keep the common, repo, common artifacts and then the binaries of WSO2. So what Puppet and Chef tool does is that it would deploy your scenarios in multiple environments as you like. So what basically the, the development team does is that you can build your integration to the Jenkins and you can instruct Jenkins to publish your environment, publish your artifacts to multiple environments. So this is one of the like one of the great uh, uh, kind of image that which visualize everything, like abstract everything, how you could uh, uh, integrate uh, your scenario. And the the so, yes, sorry, yep, yep. Sure, sorry. And what we have done with, uh, with the deployment pattern, uh, so with the with WSO2 5.0, and if you look at the clustering articles, so what we have is uh, for the timing, like you have to have, if you have like cluster, like you may are already aware that we have a pattern called, uh, pattern like manager and workers. I be, and what we have done was like with the integrator, enterprise integrator 6.0 onwards, we do no longer like support uh, Man worker manager pattern. So basically, it can be a multiple workers, right? And then, uh, how you could synchronize your artifacts. So the way you could synchronize artifacts may be like, if you look at our articles, like uh, you may see we use uh, deployment synchronizer, right? And sometimes you may use rsync. But generally, like, the choice is up to you. But we have that options remaining. But the patterns that you always try to, like, recommend to you, like, do the continuous use continu continuous integration tools and push them into the server. So what happened is like this is the faster way of like you could achieve uh, your deployment. So I mean with the documentation that we released with Enterprise Integration 6.0, you would see under clustering uh, how uh, this will be like revolutionized, and you could see uh, uh, those information further in our documentation. And then I will go for a product. Uh, performance tuning and product hardening, right? So, why we need, uh, why, why, why it is critical for your environment? Because we always compare about, because WSO2 ESB and the older products, we are the leading uh, uh, in, in performance space. We have published several articles and we showcase the, the require, uh, show, uh, we, we showcase some of the, uh, the use cases and we compete with the uh, open source uh, vendors, and we, we are the one, we are the one who leading at this point. So basically, when it comes to the performance, what you really need to look at, the, the TPS, right? So TPS in transactions, transactions per second, and how the transactions are work based on your use cases. So there can be multiple uses, because we try to cast to few use cases, but if you come to your real enterprise integration scenario, this may be where right, right? And then, the latency, how much time it would take to respond. So these are the two factors that we need to like uh, think when it comes to the performance. So one of the, one, with that one, one of the thing that we need to discuss here is that how you can Im improve your performance. So uh, I mean, you may already aware, like if you go for a, like a clustering environment, clustering, uh, uh, clustering setup, right? in, your, in your environment you may have cluster setup. So, in that, in that setup that you may already aware, like uh, some of the cluster, uh, you, you may have like uh, without auto-scaling. So what actually happened without auto-scaling is you could push, you could stress your environment, but when you try to do, and uh, in the long run, what you could observe here is that the throughput 
would get reduced, right? What happened with the throughput reduce? You would see the system load getting higher, and then the number of threads that are required to uh, perform the given operation would get increased. So these are the problems with, problems with typical like uh, uh, typical uh, typical clustering. So uh, you could choose. Uh, based on that one, like you could think with the, with the organization policies, you can think, okay, I would load these instances like 70% uh, of the time, or else you can go for uh, uh, tools or uh, products available with uh, some of the products like from the Amazon EC2, you can, you have like auto scaling capabilities where you will, it would automatically increase the, 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 the infrastructure horizontally based on the load. So what actually happens is that it would mean maintain your like performance, the throughput, the factors that we are worried about. So I believe this is one of, one of the diagram that I have extracted from the solution architect spec. So uh, you, could, uh, you can verify. And then uh, the capacity driven deployment. So uh, this diagram basically like uh, would explain you like how you can determine uh, how much nodes you required in the cluster. For instance, that uh, the way that we are planning, like if I go, if you go for a, if customer comes to me and ask like, okay, how much of node I would need in order to cut uh, the given uh, uh, throughput? So basically what we're asking the, the, when we try to do a production hardening and you know, like performance fine tuning, basically we do, do, do like this. Okay, we, we try to understand the load. And then what we are tra doing is like, we would keep uh, some sort of like a margin, like a 30% of the 30% of the actual load, and what we try to calculate the total throughput that coming into the load balancer with the margin. So basically, with that one, we identify. Okay, let's assume that my organization would allow this particular node to be handled like some sort of x uh, x throughput. So basically, with that one, you can you can divide the expected load with the particular uh, number of nodes required by dividing the node capability. So you can take how many nodes you record in your, order, in your cluster. So uh, that's what we try to like explain through this one. So with that one, I will go for a future of integration, like you already aware that what we try to do. So basically, we'll come with the ballerina, right? So the ballerina, uh, what we try to achieve is we try to bring the programming language with the text and the graphical syntax in SQL diagram mode. So you will be hear a lot of lot about this uh, programming model in coming future. I'm not gonna discuss about this one because Kasun has Kasun has already mentioned about some of the uh, some of the uh, in interesting facts about the ballerina. So uh, you already welcome to ask any questions. Like if you see uh, any question related to the ballerina integration and so on and so forth. So uh, that's all.